com. But it's a great day. And, 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 and terribly apropos, uh, the headlines on the front page of today's Financial Times, all three major headlines. These are the three, the, the only three stories that exist on the front page of the Financial Times. Number one, ING to be broken up in wake of bailout. ING, one of Europe's largest financial services groups, has been ordered by the European Commission to sell off large parts. They have to sell off their U.S. banking division. They have to sell off their insurance division. Why? Because they're too big to fail. And number two, and the second story, Iceland salad days are over as McDonald's bows out. Why? Because the, the Chicago boys, the, the, the crazed, hey, anything goes, laissez-faire, don't regulate anything, people took over the mentality of Iceland and drove the country into the, you know, into the ditch. And now because the kroner is in the tank, because most of the ingredients that are sold in McDonald's are actually imported from Germany and have to be paid for in uh, euros, they can't afford to run McDonald's anymore. And number three, the third story on the front page of the Financial Times today, banks to shoulder slice of cost under polluter pays reform bill. Uh, you, and this, this is a piece of legislation that Barney Frank is working on with the support of the Obama administration uh, that has the banks and the Republicans hysterical, uh, to, to say the least. So we'll get into those in more detail as we go on through the day. Also, uh, in our second hour, Stuart Brand is going to drop by. He's going to be in the studio. He's got a new and very controversial book out about the environment and you know what we can do to save it or not. And in our third hour, we're going to be debating the future of capitalism with Alex Epstein in the first segment and uh, Fred Friendlich of M the Mondragon uh, Cooperatives in Spain is going to drop by. But apropos of the of the banksters, and this is this is the big story. Uh, Matt Taibbi is back with us. He's, he writes for Rolling Stone, rollingstone.com, and he's got a new piece out in Rolling Stone. He, he of course, did the brilliant expose of Goldman Sachs uh, a few months ago, and this is equally deserving of not just praise, but every person in America, particularly every elected official in America, should be reading this right now, and hopefully they are. It's titled, not Wall Street's Naked Squin Swindle. The subtitle is Scheme to Flood the Market with Counterfeit Stock, kill, Help Kill Bear, Bear Stearns and Lehman Brothers, and the Feds Have Yet to Bust the Culprits. Matt, welcome back to the show. Thanks for having me on. Great. You, know, you, you are just absolutely one of the best writers out there today, the, the work that you are doing, and I, I just, I'm, I'm really impressed. You start the article out, and, and actually close the article up, uh, in a way, with the same story. On Tuesday, March 11th, 2008, somebody, nobody knows who, made one of the craziest bets Wall Street has ever seen. Tell us about it. Uh, yeah, somebody bought $1.7 million worth of, worth of options on March 11th, 2008, and that was a day when Bear Stearns was trading at 62, and the options that they, they bought uh, gave them the right to sell Bear Stearns stock at 30, but they were going to ex that those options were expiring within nine days. So, right, so these means, were basically bets. I'm sorry. Yeah. What that so means. you're basically betting that Bear Stearns, one of the oldest and biggest company, you know, companies on Wall Street, is going to lose half its value within two weeks. And uh, you know that's the kind of thing that nobody does unless you know something. Uh, and it just they you know they happened to got they got paid off they they made this crazy crazy bet which people that I talked to compared to buying a lottery ticket um, and uh, and somebody made two hundred and seventy million bucks on that bet and and then you point out that the day before this bet was made or was it the day of this it bet? was the day of the exactly day of this day. bet there yeah. was a super secret meeting at the fed that we wouldn't even have found out about if it hadn't been for a plucky person filing a FOIA request right um, there was a super secret meeting at the fed that included all the major wall street players and, Geithner, Bear and, and Bernanke yeah except Bear Stearns right right everybody was there from from pretty much all the major investment banks on Wall Street and, and some of the biggest hedge funds on Wall Street. Uh, you know, Bob Rubin was there representing Citigroup. Uh, you know, there were folks from Morgan Stanley, from uh, J.P. Morgan Chase, which of course would end up owning Bear Stearns within within a week right. uh, with thirty billion dollars or twenty nine billion dollars of help from the from the Fed. Uh, and all these people were there, and you know they're having this meeting. And as soon as as soon as that meeting breaks up, basically there's suddenly a run on Bear Stearns. You know, right. people start pulling credit from the uh, the company, and the stock starts plunging. And within uh, within a week, 
Bear Stearns is being sold off to J.P. Morgan Chase at two dollars a share. Uh, so you know, it, it's something. While it was trading at thirty dollars a share. It was trading, yeah, at uh, on that Friday before when it went into the weekend. I mean, it was in trouble. There's no question right. about it. But uh, it well, went you... into the weekend trading at thirty, and Hank Paulson stepped in. And when they did the deal over the weekend, they, they he made the price two dollars. Right, and Hank Paulson, of course, the former chairman of Goldman. And uh, throughout this article, you know, the, the the framing device for this article is this this incredible bet this this uh, that that somebody made on March right. 11th that paid off. And uh, the the question is, you know, who's behind this? Who's the who's? Uh, you may there's one line in this article that, and I uh, I'm doing this from memory, but it was something to the effect of basically our economy is now in the control of 300 white guys in Wall Street, <laughs> right? And none right. of them are elected, by the way, right? And, right. And so what do you know? We've got a gangster economy. I, when when Bush came into office, there was about twenty trillion dollars worth of derivatives in the in you know running around the world. You know, bets on bets on bets. And when this thing melted down, uh, there are some estimates that it was over nine hundred trillion dollars. This in a world where the entire GDP of the planet is only sixty five trillion dollars, the entire GDP of the U S is only roughly fifteen trillion dollars. Over nine hundred trillion dollars worth of bets on bets on bets on bets. I mean, it just had run nuts. We've got a system where the banks that used to make money by loaning money to Main Street to run a business now are making money buying and selling uh, not even tulip bulbs. Right, right. Yeah, no, it's it's, it's basically turned into a casino and I, and I think that's that's the um, you know, that that's that's really the salient point of these whole these episodes with Bear and Lehman Brothers is that you know, it's 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 a pretty obvious case of insider trading in both cases. Uh, you know, the, the the options that you know that, that we went mentioned at the at the top of this discussion. Um, you know, that's that's one part of it. The other part of it is this whole biz- business of naked short selling, which is right. you know very very complicated and hard to get into. Um, but it was, it's pretty clear that there's a small group of people on Wall Street who are privy to, to a lot of information, and there's uh, there everybody else who's not privy to any of it, and and you, you've basically created a two tiered class structure uh, on Wall Street, and 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 that's kind of not the way the free market is supposed to work. You're not supposed to have a situation where you know four or five banks get to you know have meetings in secret and say well we are you know if we do this are we going to get 30 billion dollars in aid from the government or right. if we do that it's not the way it's supposed to work but right. and but yet you know the the banks are still to this day fighting to have a market that looks like that i mean goldman sachs came out yesterday and actually said openly that you know that transparency is not always good for the market and that we you know we support dark pools of trading and right and uh, and that sort of thing, and so yeah, this is what people need to be aware of that there's really this two tiered structure. Right. And and the guys at Goldman are getting ready to to carve up thirty two billion dollars amongst themselves, while while as you point out in the article, this is a massive transfer of wealth away away from the middle class. You talk about they're picking the last of the of the bones of the, of the the wealth of the middle class in America, and and putting it in their pockets. I mean, this is just this is the crime of the century. And and the Obama administration is going, eh, this is fine. We're full of Goldman Sachs people in the Treasury Department and whatnot. So. So right, people, right. People need to read your article, Matt Taibbi. Naked uh, Wall Street's naked swindle: the scheme to flood the market with counterfeit stocks, help Bear Stearns, help kill Bear Stearns and Lehman Brothers, and the Feds have yet to bust the culprits. A brilliant piece of journalism, Matt Taibbi over at RollingStone.com. Matt, thanks for being with us. Thanks for having me on, Tom. And 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 thanks for the incredible work that you're doing. It's it's uh, it's the story that needs to be told. <laughs>